Sullivan here. Perillo here. Lorik here. Kavich here. Kuzikowski here. Oldani here. Super here. Um, and Chaucey is excused. Um, approval of the minutes from February 11th, 2020. If everybody please take a look. And when you're satisfied, if there's no errors, omissions, or questions, we'll entertain a motion. Is it going to make a motion to approve the February 11th, 2020 minutes? Seaford seconds. Roll call. Anna, I. Sullivan, I. Hello, I. Lorik, I. Kavich, I. Kuzikowski, I. Aldani, I. Seaford, I. And significant common council actions. Carrie. The council held an ordinance to amend Chapter 19 of the Municipal Code and to adopt the comprehensive plan for the City of Oak Creek. However, this will be considered again at the March 3rd Common Council meeting. Council approved an ordinance to rezone the properties at 1920, 1900, 1850, 1848, 1816, 1800, 1750, and 1700 West Drexel Avenue and 7700 South Ikea Way to B6 Interchange Regional Retail District Planned Unit Development. Also approved an ordinance to amend the conditions and restrictions in ordinance number 2665 for automobile storage and outdoor storage of rental vehicles on the property at 561 West College Avenue. And also approved a resolution approving a certified survey map submitted by John Thompson of Highgate LLC for the property at 7869 South 13th Street. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, gets us into new business and item 5A is uh, Review of a certified survey map submitted by Kevin Kennedy, uh, Walden OCLLC, dividing and reconfiguring the properties at 1920, 1900, 1850, 1848, 1816, 1800, 1750, and 1700 West Drexel, and 1700 South Akiah Way. Harry. Proposal is to divide and reconfigure those properties into four conforming lots within the planned unit development. On the screen right now is the proposed CSM. And you will note that there are conditions that are included in your plan commission packets that reference the, um, the wetlands, temporary cul-de-sac, and outlots. So uh, the, the staff report has been discussed internally, and we do have some changes to those proposed Conditions of approval in the suggested motion, and I will help you out with those when we get there. However, there is a staff recommendation for approval in consideration of those uh, conditions of approval. Now, one thing that I would like to discuss just real quickly is the uh, requirement for snow storage and um, what was listed in the staff report as a temporary cul-de-sac easement. That's one of the changes that is being proposed. This is for access at the end of the Creekside Crossing Circle, and that would be for uh, turnaround space for snow plows and for snow storage. We do have um, an agreement uh, in concept regarding access to um, have snow plows turn around and snow storage on lot three. So with that in mind, if there are any questions from the Plan Commission, be happy to um, provide some information um, however, we do have a, a suggested motion for approval, and I will help out with those amended conditions. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, this time, uh, I'll open it up to the commission for questions, and if need be, we'll have the applicant approach. Uh, Greg? Um, with the first condition that it has to incorporate any cross-access easements, is that um, connections between the lots within the development? Correct. So that's actually one of the proposed changes to the conditions that we are recommending. Um, what we are trying to incorporate here is just a, a recognition that all of the lots within the PUD would have access uh, within the PUD itself to the different lots and also some parking arrangements there. So we do have a suggested condition that would be that the CSM is revised to include a reference to generalized cross access on all lots within the development prior to recording. With the existing residential lot, I know they don't want any more entrances off of Drexel. Um, will that be, if that gets I guess, built into this development as a whole, will that then be visited at that time to get access to that lot? Any future development or redevelopment of the parcels not 
currently included in the PUD would be addressed at the time. Brad? I have a question about the temporary cul-de-sac. <clears throat> Can I give an idea of where that would be? Or So where? what is shown on the CSM is the public portion of the development. So Creekside Crossing Circle comes in off of Ikea, uh, goes east and then south down to Drexel. So that is the entirety of the public uh, road there. Where it turns to go south is where the um, the right of entry and where the snow storage agreement would occur on lot three. Thank you. Add anything? Just like to reiterate what uh, Carrie has been speaking about in, in terms of the um, temporary cul-de-sac and, and snow storage. Um, one of the main concerns on engineering was um, the ability for vehicles to turn around um, errand vehicles mainly from Ikea way, uh, snow plows, um, you know, a, as, you're, as you're working, we don't want to uh, force our snow plows to be doing U-turns or three-point turns at an intersection. Um, and we've discussed this with the developer, and um, I think they can probably speak a little more on how they're going to manage that. Sounds reasonable from an engineering point of view. Michael, you'd like to address us? Hi, Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the commission. I'm Michael DeMichel, 2639 North Downer Avenue. Um, I just wanted to add a little more um, information to this, as I did meet today with Matthew and Mike Sullivan, because um, this was a, a new item that they brought to our attention yesterday, and we hadn't really thought about the fact that uh, it's a one-way coming up from Drexel, but it's two ways coming in as you come east off of Ikea Way. Um, we haven't quite figured out exactly how we're going to accomplish this engineering wise. It's a, it's a good point. We have no problem providing snow storage that for, for at least Creekside Circle. Um, but the, we, wanted to, we, we want to remain flexible as it relates to that road and that intersection because that, inter that road could be extended in the, in the cul-de-sac or roundabout or what have you might make more sense further east in this development as we figure out what the other users and what the other uh, buildings and, and the configurations that are going to happen within this. So we would prefer to um, leave the CSM as is today. Uh, future changes that might need to accommodate that, we can, we can have uh, internal agreements with the city for, uh, you know, property usage rights, what have you, in order to do that, whether it's a cul-de-sac or what it is yet we don't quite know because we just we're just trying to address this problem but if we can uh, our, our idea is to at least allow us to to be flexible and remain flexible for the future uh, uses of lot three uh, as it relates to access uh, we we at Walden will be doing a um, uh, a declaration of, of access easements covenants stormwater what have you and restrictions that would um, we would record as part of before any closing or transfer of land for this. So that will cover all of the all of the lots in the development and will um, provide cross access to the different the different lots, the different um, easements that are required for utilities, stormwater, what have you. And then uh, um, that would be something that could be a, a document that would, would be able to be amended in the future if necessary. So um, that it's better, we believe it's better handled that way than, than actually creating out lots or putting it on the CSM. So that's why we, we did it that way. I think that's all I have. Digest that. Okay. I actually have a question. Yes, and maybe I misunderstood that, but uh, from what I heard, uh, the snow is going to be stored at lot number three, correct? Right. For the time being, you, uh, we'll allow the city to push the snow onto lot three and let it sit there. So how is the drainage going to happen, especially you have the wetland to the north? So is the drainage draining which way? Uh, dr lot 3 drains both to the north and to the south. Exactly, and you have the wetland to the north. How are you protecting that? Well, the, the, there, there's a, it doesn't show on the CSM, but there's a large uh, stormwater detention facility uh, just north of the wetland. So the, the wetland is not going to be touched. The, the water will go around it. And outfalling where? 
Uh, it, that, that pond out falls into the right of way at the freeway. Um, Don, anything no, no, no. on the top of your head? Heard anything else? All are just concerned about that car thing. Um, yeah, it seems to be staff's largest concern too with it. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Are there any concerns for the fire department or police, uh, police department? Mike, any concerns about you navigating that cul-de-sac with your equipment at this time. Okay. Uh, yes. What's that? Um, Mike said right now, um, Mike, Assistant Chief Mike Havey stated um, from the audience that right now fire does not have a concern with cul-de-sac and moving their equipment. Um, Again, snow removal this winter, we've taken it kind of lightly, but we have in the past had problems with it. Um, I think it's pretty prudent to, you know, plan for those snow plows and that, that storage. Um, I don't see we're moving it farther to the east. I think, I think it would be a workable solution on the corner. But, um, again, I'd, I'd defer to engineering for, for their expertise on it, and I would follow their, their advice on it. Because, again, it shall be temporary. And, again, we don't know how quickly this will develop or won't develop. Um, as far as the, the cross access that, that the applicant preferred, um, how do we look with that, Carrie, Doug? Maybe I can just shed a little bit of clarity on that. Uh, what staff, certainly in the city and through all of our development partners in this uh, unique uh, development are looking for certainly is the ability for anyone within the Creekside Crossing Marketplace to really cross and legally cross between lots. Uh, uh, there are a couple ways to accomplish that. Certainly cross access easements, prescribed cross access easements would be one of those ways. Uh, understand that the applicant has some reservations about doing that and just for clarity's purpose I think staff still would like a generalized note placed on the CSM that uh, clearly illustrates that uh, there'll be access for all the lots within that without prescribing through a legal description what those easements are. And I think that, and I don't, want to, well, I don't want to speak for the applicant, I think that the concern was, well, we don't know where those points are going to be. Uh, and we agree, but uh, we do, we all, hopefully we all agree that the, the coordinated nature of this development really demands that people be able to freely move between those lots. Uh, and that this is just a way of acknowledging that on the face of the CSM without having a prescribed cross access. <clears throat> so the staff's recommendation probably gives us the most flexibility? Uh, it, it certainly acknowledges that you know, our expectations with respect to access without uh, pinning them down to a geographic location. Okay. Um, I guess I understand that. I, how's that sit with you, Michael? Yeah, he, he is, they're asking for a note on the CSM that will, I don't know if it's going to reference the declaration that we're, we're Going can. to write up. I it guess. Can. I guess if the note references the declaration, that's fine. Okay. Um, okay. Other than that, I, I would go off staff recommendation, but you're gonna have to really give us some clarity as to the conditions there, Carrie, if you would Certainly. please. So uh, the recommendation would be um, for the plan commission recommending to the common council that the certified survey map submitted by Kevin Kennedy, Walden OC LLC for the properties as listed to be approved with the following conditions. That the CSM is revised to include a general uh, reference to uh, generalized cross access either declaration or agreement on all lots within the development prior to recording. Two, that a revised plan for the terminus of the Creekside Crossing Circle is provided to the engineering department and temporary snow storage and right of entry is provided to the city. Three would be stricken, and four would be that all technical corrections, including but not limited to spelling errors, minor coordinate geometry corrections, and corrections required for compliance with the Municipal Code and Wisconsin, Wisconsin statutes are made prior to recording. Okay. Uh, would somebody like to motion and reference 
Gary's statement. Shepard makes a motion that the Planning Commission recommends to the Common Council that the certified survey map submitted by Kevin <coughs> Kennedy Walden OC LLC for the properties at 90, 1920, 1900, 1850, 1848, 1816, 1800, 1750, and 1700 West Drexel Avenue and 77 Hood South Akia Way be approved with the following conditions. One, which Kerry said, and number two, which Kerry said, and three, of course, that all technical corrections included, but not limited to spelling errors, minor two coordinate, ge <coughs> geometry conditions and corrections required for compli compliance with the multi municipal code and Wisconsin state stature <coughs> are made prior to recording. Get that all? Okay, we'll take a second on that. Hold on any seconds. Roll call. Kenna, aye. Sullivan, aye. Aye. Lorik, aye. Bukiewicz, aye. Wysikowski, aye. Hold on, aye. Sleeper, aye. Great. Thank you for the assistance there. Um, gets us to 5B, uh, master, master Landscape Review, uh, submitted by Kevin Kennedy, Walden OCLLC for Creekside Crossing Marketplace. Uh, on the properties, listed. Um, and they include those on Drexel Avenue as well as 7700 South Kia Way. Gary. <laughs> right. So we're talking about the same property, the same PUD, which was actually approved by the Common Council on February 17th. And within those conditions and uh, restrictions for the PUD was re the requirement for submission of detailed landscaping plans for all stages of development to be reviewed by the Plan Commission prior to the approval of any building permit within de the development. Since we have a proposal for one of the lots that is in the CSM that you just reviewed, we do have the requirement to review the master landscape plan, which has been submitted and we have been discussing. We got the latest version, which actually is not included in uh, my slides. We got it late this afternoon. We unfortunately have not had a thorough time to uh, digest it and give the staff review that it uh, deserves. So. We are asking for a little bit more time to review this, to work with the applicant on any remaining requirements that may be re um, necessary for compliance with both the PUD and code. So we are recommending that the Plan Commission hold this until the March 10th meeting. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, well, you guys will get a sneak peek at, at what's proposed. Um, came in a little bit late again. Um, something this size we really want to make sure that we're on the right track and you know, we take due diligence to make sure we have it right so um right off the top of your head any questions or concerns from commission members learning about it make a decision. um this in way no way shape or form will really hold up any of the development going forward will it Thank you, Mayor. Uh, no, it, it won't. As a matter of fact, and we've had some really good discussions with the uh, with all the parties involved in this partnership. And and uh, as Kerry stated, this being a planning unit development, we obviously want to make sure that the landscaping, both along the streetscape and within the individual sites within the development, has a cohesive nature to it, and it's really something that's well, that's well thought out. We've seen how that can really uh, affect the place in a positive manner when we're talking about Drexel Town Square. We've We've used that same approach in uh, providing a, a master landscape guidance document for the Highgate uh, development across the interstate. And we expect the, the same positive results to be accrued by having this master landscape plan and guidelines uh, for the Creekside Crossing Marketplace. So the PUD did require this uh, master landscape plan to be submitted prior to approval of the site plans for the individual sites. Obviously, you want the individual sites and you'll be looking at that as, as a later agenda item to comply with the master landscaping plan. Given the fact that we're not quite there on the master landscaping plan, or to be quite honest, the, the individual site landscaping plan for the Stand Rock development, uh, we are again asking for a little bit of time to hold that. Now, as we discuss the site plan uh, for Stand Rock, you'll note that the staff uh, feels confident 
that the site plan and certainly the building plan is something that uh, can be reviewed and approved if so, if the planning commission so inclines, recognizing of course that if there are major changes to the site plan and result from the changes to or the review of the landscaping plan that those might have to come back. But short answer to your question is uh, yes, I think you will have the ability to approve those plans if you so desire. Okay. Um, and again, uh, this being a, a premier development going on in the city of Oak Creek and this kind of being our gateway entrance, I do think it's prudent to make sure uh, everything is reviewed to spec and that we give them um, an A1 development when it goes down. So, um, I would be fine with the whole. Uh, Christina. Yeah, I just want to make sure that, uh, especially like you said, this is the entrance to Oak Creek, that those trees are going to be maintained on the long run, not just in so we have to be committed to the maintenance of that entrance. No, this is something I, needs to I, be I agree up. with you. We, you know, that's that's really part of a, the long range plan. Is everything we put in is there for the long long haul? And again, um, we expect this to really be an A one development, and maintenance plays into that greatly. Just like any other property we try to do in the city that that we own and maintain. So. Anyone else? Nothing? Okay. Um, oh, Fred? We don't need a motion, do we? To hold, yes, we do, because it was on the agenda. So. Make a motion to put the other one on hold. Till the March. Do we have a date? Or? There is, there's a suggested motion within the staff report for holding the item until uh, March 10th. So, I'm sorry, one more time. March 10th? March 10th. Correct. All right, till March 10th, Fred. Amend that. That was March 10th for the next meeting. So the motion is that the plan commission holds action on the proposed master landscape plan submitted by Walden OC LLC for the properties at 1920, 1900, 1850, 1848, 1816, 1800, 1750, and 1700 West Drexel Avenue and 7700 South Ikea Way until the March 10th plan commission meeting. Correct. Hold on any seconds. Roll call. Anna I. Sullivan, aye. Aye. Lorik, aye. Kavich, aye. Kuzikowski, aye. Aldani, aye. Seifert, aye. Uh, item 5C is a plan review for site, landscape, and related plans submitted by Stan Rock Hospitality for a hotel and a conference center on the property, on a portion of the property at 7700 South Kia Way. Gary? The proposal is for a hotel with conference center attached to it on lot two of the proposed CSM that we reviewed this evening. This is a general plan showing where that property is going to be developed. And if we get a little bit closer view, this is the proposal for the hotel itself. Again, an idea of where those property boundaries are. This is a slightly amended um, site plan. It might be a little bit different than what you're seeing in your plan commission packets. However, I did send an email out with the revised site plan. The proposal includes an 89,751 square foot four story hotel with an attached 11,500 gross square foot conference center on the southeast. The Homewood Suites brand would be operating the hotel. It's including 121 units, restaurant bar, pantry, fitness center, indoor pool, laundry services, outdoor gardens, and the sport court at the back. The restaurant and bar service would be between 4 p.m. and 10 p.m. Monday through Saturday and exceptions would be made for conference center needs. The lot and building meet all dimensional requirements and setbacks. You'll note that there are two trash enclosures, one on the east side, northeast of the conference center, and one at the north portion of the property. Both of those trash enclosures would match the building. One is slightly larger than the other and has an overhead door. Per the PUD, a minimum of five feet from all public rights of way, front and rear lot lines is required for parking and uh, parking setbacks. There are two stalls that are slightly encroaching into that public right-of-way and front setback, and those are some modifications that we continue to be working with the applicant and their consultants regarding um, might be required to have a little bit of treatment there with regard to landscaping. Um, we do have within the PUD language that says that any modifications to a parking setback may be granted by a three-quarter majority approval of the plan commission but only if deemed consistent with an approved master landscaping plan. And this is where we were talking about possibly having some uh, requirements that uh, the, the site plan be amended slightly. 
to comply with the master landscaping plan and landscaping plans for the site itself. If that were to occur, then the site plan would require another review by the plan commission, but that's not guaranteed that that would be necessary. We continue to work with the applicant through those things, and we would be requesting that the landscape plan be brought back at the same time as the master landscape plan for the PUD. So we do have two access points for this property. One is off of the proposed public Creekside Crossing Circle, which is off of Ikea Way. And then a little bit further up, there's a secondary access point that's off of Ikea Way that's directly across from the um, driveway for Forest Ridge Elementary School. There are 204 parking stalls provided in the plans and within your staff reports, were some comments regarding the overall parking and the minimum requirements. We've not received an overall parking study, so again, those comments were based on what code would typically require for the proposed uses. Uh, we did receive some information from the applicant based on their uh, Hampton Inn and Suites location in West Dallas, that for that facility, which is slightly smaller, has a few um, fewer rooms, and the conference facility is about 8,000 square feet, that they estimated they would need an additional 40 um, parking stalls on this site based on how large the conference facility and the hotel are here. Um, if we go through what would be required with a strict interpretation of a code of the code, it would be more than 250 parking stalls that would be required. The applicant is confident that 204 stalls on this property would be sufficient for the use. Uh, we do also have a requirement for the plan commission, if that modification is going to be allowed, uh, to make a, a specific um, approval for the reduction in some of the parking stall dimensions. They're called compact parking stalls. They're essentially 9 by 15 rather than 9 by 18, allows for a little bit smaller uh, dimension for smaller vehicles. We do have 28 of those provided for in the plans. This is just an idea of what the landscaping plan that we received um, shortly was uh, including. We would like some more time to review this and again, bring it back to the plan commission on the, on the March 10th meeting. And rather than going into the floor plans, uh, we'd rather get to the elevations of the building, give you an idea of what this hotel and conference center will look like. So on the screen right now are some of the elevations showing the materials for um, the hotel and conference center, which will use stone fiber cement panels in three different uh, orientations, EFAS as accent materials, and a standing seam metal roof canopy on two sides of the conference center, um, as well as some metal tower elements highlighting the entrances and the corner of that conference center. Materials calculations for the entirety of the building were included in your staff reports. Um, you will note that there are some elements of the building that will be lit with uplit small floodlights. Uh, rooftop mechanical units are going to be placed behind the parapets on the hotel. They will be centered on the conference center roof such that they cannot be seen from um, the road or the right of way, the public right of way. Uh, we will include that requirement as one of the conditions of approval. All Rooftop mechanicals, ground, building mounted, all of the mechanical units must be screened. The trash enclosures, as previously mentioned, will be um, comprised mostly of stone to match the existing building. The gates are proposed to be stained western red cedar. Um, staff has made a recommendation in similar cases where either uh, wood gates or something similar like that is used or something of a little bit more sturdy material. We do see a lot of broken wood gates for trash enclosures throughout the city. Just like to make that recommendation for something a little bit um, more sturdy. There is one transformer enclosure that's on the uh, south side of the building. That'll be stone to match the existing building too. It'll just blend in. Signs are shown as placeholders and those will be reviewed at a later date. Stormwater on the property, we did receive some um, information from the engineering department. All stormwater requirements will have to be coordinated with the engineering department. Um, all permit requirements will have to be satisfied as well. Water and sewer connections, abandonments, easements, those all need to be coordinated with the water and sewer utility as well. 
There is the suggested motion, if the plan commission is satisfied with these plans, uh, that the plan commission approves the site and building plans su submitted by Kevin Kennedy, oh, I'm sorry, by Pete Helen Stanrock Hospitality for a portion of the property at 7700 South Ikea Way, which is lot two of, of CSM to be recorded. We do have some modifications to the conditions of approval here as well. We'd like to strike condition number three and Condition number four would be modified that the exterior stone veneer meets the minimum required requirement per the PUD. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, before we start, does the applicant want to say anything or you want to wait for questions? Anything? Want to hold up? Okay. Uh, we'll open it up to the commission. Christina, you want to start us off? Yes. Uh, I have a question about the access from... Uh, Ikea Parkway because like I heard they're going to be a conference center there in addition to the hotel So it's going to be a high volume is that uh, between Ikea way and the uh, proposed public road Is it going to be a stop sign signalized or how is this going to be controlled? The signalized intersection is at Creekside Crossing Circle. That's the secondary access that is shown north of the signalized intersection so the main access will actually be off of Creekside Crossing Circle, which is, if you can see my cursor on the screen, right here. So it is signalized. Okay, thank you. That's all that I have. Yeah, anything from engineering? Yeah, we'd like to reiterate point number eight on the revisions of stormwater. Um, through our review, we've, you know, we've noticed there um, between the stormwater management plan in the recorded documents that there are some differences that need to be addressed. Um, we have been working with um, the developer, um, made them aware of it, and we've made notes. So um, we just need that addressed prior to um, moving forward. Permits. Yep, correct. Uh, okay. Uh, Dawn, anything? Greg? Um, in referencing sheet... C200, the site plan, just noting that the, the entrance off of South Ikea Way, I believe you said, was directly across from the entrance to the school. The secondary access north of uh, Creekside Crossing Circle, that is across from the school. That's, that's uh, for the, sorry, there's a median opening there. And that is right across from the driveway. That's a standard requirement for developments with, from the engineering department. Uh, the grading plan, sheet number C300, it looks like the entrance is further north. Is that correct? We've had some revisions that have been going around, and not all of the sheets have been revised okay. to show what is on the screen right now. What's okay. on the screen right now, uh, sheet C200, the site plan, this is the, the latest version. Chris, anything? Oh, nothing for me. Don? Oh, nothing. What you, Fred? I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, my only concern is the landscape. We want to bring that back on the 10th, correct? Correct. Um, other than that, we've kind of been through the building materials. Uh, this is nothing foreign to us. So. I'm excited. It'll be a great addition to the city. I'm looking forward to it. So, okay, um, a motion, if you need some assistance, I'll look to Carrie once again to help us out. <laughs> Aldani moves that the plan commission approves the site and building plan submitted by Pete Helen Stanrock Hospitality for a portion of the property at 7700 South Ikea Way, lot two of CFSM to be recorded with the following conditions. That all relevant code requirements remain in effect. That a certified survey map approved by the Common Council creating the subject parcel shall be submitted for recording prior to the submission of building permit applications. Number three has been struck. Number four, there is a change. That the exterior stone veneer meets the minimum requirement per the PUD. Okay, as stated. Five, that the landscape plan is revised as necessary for compliance with the code and PUD requirements and submitted for review before the plan commission at the March 10, 2020 meeting. 
Any amendments to the site plan that may be required as a result of the amended landscape plans may also require additional review and approval by the plan commission. That the plans are revised to include locations and screening for all mechanical equipment, transformers and utilities, conference center, ground building, etc. That detailed plans for signage are reviewed and approved by the plan commission prior to submission signed permit applications. The required revisions to the stormwater plans are submitted for review and approval by the engineering department prior to submission of building permit applications. That all revised plans, site building, landscape, etc., are submitted in digital format for review by the Department of Community Development prior to the submission of building permit applications. I believe that's it. Mr. Collins, kill second. Before I call the roll, I just want to ask the applicant to really work with staff in a trash bin. I know it sounds nitpicky, but I think their point is valid. Uh, those wooden doors are going to be open numerous times a week, uh, if not hundreds of times a year. Uh, they will fail, and I think their point is valid. We've experienced that in the past, so I encourage you to work with staff to correct that condition. We got a second? We had a second. Roll call, please. Anna, aye. Sullivan, aye. Willow, aye. Lorak, aye. Kavich, aye. Zikowski, aye. Aldani, aye. Seifert, aye. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, that was C, correct? Uh, gets us to 5D. Uh, conditions and restrictions uh, for the Oak Creek Hotel Associates LLC for a conditional use permit for a hotel on the property at 9315 South 13th Street. Gary. This is a review of the conditions and restrictions for the approval of a conditional use permit that was recommended for approval by the Plan Commission at the February 11th meeting. This is for the property on 13th Street that is highlighted in red on the screen. If you turn to page 2 of 7 of the conditions and restrictions that are proposed, I'd like to draw your attention to section 2E, which states that all future land divisions shall follow subdivision plat and or certified survey map procedures. If required by the Common Council, a development agreement shall be completed between the owner and the city prior to approval of said land division document to ensure the construction and installation of public improvements required in these conditions and restrictions. Chapter 14 as amended and all other applicable sections of the municipal code as amended. So E1 includes specific requirements for division of the property at 9315 South 13th Street to be A, internal access via a shared private road or driveway is subject to recorded shared access easements and depicted on any proposed subdivision plat and or survey, certified survey map may be allowed to substitute for street frontage requirements with recommendation by the plan commission and approval of a modification by the common council and B shared access in the aforementioned uh, section is limited to the creation of one new lot via subdivision plat, subdivision plat and or certified survey map. What this is really saying is right now they have access that is a cross access um, and shared access with the Stein Hoffels property to the north. That was provided for in a previous CSM. So that is the access that will be used for this development. If the parcel has been is further divided, they will be allowed to do so without having to meet separate street frontage requirements with internal access. Under section 3A, the site and use restrictions, maintenance and operation requirements, one four-story hotel with 95 guest rooms in accordance with these conditions and restrictions is allowed on the property. Other uses permitted by the zoning district in accordance with other applicable sections of the City of Oak Creek Municipal Code is amended and these conditions and restrictions are also allowed on the property. B, the hotel shall include the following operational features, indoor pool, fitness center, breakfast pantry market area, outdoor patio seating, 24-hour on-premise staff, and available daily housekeeping. C, the hotel shall not provide in-unit kitchens or self-service guest laundry facilities. Under D, detailed plans for signage will be submitted for review and approval by the Plan Commission in accordance with code and other sections that are applicable. No pole signs, pennant flags, light pole flags, permanent banners, or flashing or blinking signs shall be permitted as part of the conditional use permit. Page 3 of 7, E, there shall be no outdoor storage of any materials, equipment, vehicles, other than the vehicles directly associated with the use, semi-truck and trailer pack parking, or merchandise for sale. 
Parking and access, access will be via 13th Street and any um, cross-access development agreements. Any future division and or development of the parcel shall provide cross-access and pedestrian connections as previously mentioned. Setbacks for the development, the principal structure and accessory structures shall be 25 feet from the front and street right-of-way setback, 25 feet from the rear and 15 feet from the side, off-street parking as mentioned. Time of compliance is 12 months. That's the standard uh, date and time frame. And the rest is all um, as previously provided in other conditions and restrictions. Uh, be happy to answer any questions from the Plan Commission. Otherwise, there is a suggested motion that the Plan Commission recommends that the Common Council adopts the conditions and restrictions as part of the conditional use permit for a hotel on the property at 9315 South 13th Street after a public hearing. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, Open it up to the commission is, uh, I guess, before we go anywhere, uh, on condition E, uh, the cross at the cross easement on the other property, if so developed, uh, east, I would have that shared. Is everybody pretty clear on, on what's meant by that? Christina, I figure you got that one. Matt, you got that one down. Any questions from any other commissioner regarding that? Okay. Um, then I'll open it up. Any questions? Uh, Christina, we'll start with you, please. Uh, page three of seven, uh, B, under parking and access. Um, that road is owned by Milwaukee County, not Wisconsin DOT. Therefore, that should be corrected to reflect the county. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Show off. Matt? Uh, Don, how about you, Greg? Chris? Um, well, since this is in my district, one concern I brought up originally was a wording for extended stay. And I'm sure it's in here someplace that I didn't get it, but is is there, can you point me to which page or paragraph? So what we tried to do to get at that that kind of concern, um, and actually it's not necessarily for the type of hotel being an extended stay, but for the types of um, things that we would want to have on this property. We are allowing one hotel that is very specific, and we are uh, incorporating operational features that we would want to have as part of the hotel as a requirement. And we are also limiting what would uh, be allowed as part of the uh, unit provision, so no in-unit kitchens or self-service guest laundry facilities. Trying to get at it that way, trying to get at what we would want to see on the property. Thank you. I can live with that. Okay. Don? Oh, no question. Fred? I'm fine. Uh, landscape plan. That would be included as part of site plan review. Okay. Okay. Um, I have nothing on it myself, so if anybody would like to do a motion, please. Seifert moves that the Planning Commission recommends that the Common Council adopt the conditions and restrictions as part of a conditional use permit for a hotel on the property at 9315 South 13th Street after a public hearing. Anna seconds. Uh, roll call. Hannah, aye. Sullivan, aye. Bill, aye. Laura, aye. Kavich, aye. Skalski, aye. Aldani, aye. Super, aye. Okay. Good luck, guys. Um, 5E is a plan review, site, landscape, and related plan submitted by Mike Dufek, Dufek Construction, for an addition to an existing industrial building, 7340 South Howell Avenue. Laura, you got this one? Oh, yes. <laughs> Welcome back, right? All right, so this uh, proposed plan is for an addition um, at 7340 South Howell Avenue uh, near Man Court. The uh, proposed addition is approximately 30,000 square feet. Plan Commission may recall, if any of you were actually on the uh, Plan Commission at the time, in 2007 this plan was actually reviewed and approved by the Plan Commission very similar plan. Um, as you can see on the screen, there is a storm sewer line that travels the eastern uh, edge of the property. Uh, staff is requesting that
that they work, the applicant will work with our engineering department to make sure that the storm sewer line is in good working order before they put the parking lot over the top of it and uh, place the, re the retaining wall. There are a few items that are missing in the plan that we are working right now with the applicant on. Uh, the, there's a fire hydrant on the eastern side of the addition. Uh, there was no notation of where the water line is coming from or actually the sewer connections as well. Uh, so we are requesting revised plans to note that. There is no landscaping plans included in this. This is also an item that we are re currently requesting from the applicant prior to submitting building plans. There are no mechanical units also mentioned in the plan. Uh, that is, right now, they're planning on using interior heating elements, but once they secure a tenant, they'll figure out what mechanicals need to be placed. Per code, this is going to be required to be screened, so these will also be required uh, revised plans. One of the other items that's missing is, per code, if sides of a building that are visible from adjoining residential properties or public streets are required to uh, have similar characteristics as the front facade. This is not included in these drawings. Uh, again, the applicant is working with us to go and update these plans to um, show that they are mimicking some of the facade on the north side. And most of these uh, recommendations are placed into your uh, suggested motions for your consideration. Um. Questions from the commission? Give you guys a few minutes. Don, you want to? Oh, actually, I don't. Okay. Um, looks like he's still looking. Uh, how about you, Matt? Same. Okay. Don? Greg? I Chris? just. Oh, go ahead. Go I ahead. I just had Chris. some questions with, with the things that are missing or that are um, not tied up. Is it. Are they. Uh, is it premature to, to start the, the process without having the rest of the answers um, figured out? You know, so. This would be listed as a condition for approval. Yeah, but you know, they don't have the uh, mechanical units, everything that you guys had on, on the, uh, page two of our staff report. For those needs, uh, especially when it comes to the mechanicals, will be determined based on the attendant that will be placed in. Yeah, okay, you did say that, thank you. Uh, Christina, anything? Uh, no. Um, I have a couple. Uh, let's start with the, the sewer line that, that's going through the parking lot. Do we get an easement on that? Uh, whose line is that? Is that is that our line? Is that a private line? That's a, under a public utility easement that is owned by the city. Um, that's why we're requesting to just verify the uh, structural value of it, make sure that um, you know it's not deteriorated in any way. This is protection for both city and the and the owner. Pretty standard way of going about it, Matt. Yeah, well, you can send a camera. You can do okay. Very easy things and, to and, look and, at it. And we're good with that. We've done it in the past where we varied them under. I, I mean, I don't expect them to move the sewer line. It'd be a big deal, but um, just so we can get at it when and if it fails. We, we have a number of sewers underneath parking lots or roads and okay. things, so we're, we're okay with it. Uh, secondly, you know, mechanicals on the roof, you know, typically you're going to put up HVAC units up there. Structurally, how are you going to, are you going to, every time a tenant comes in, you're going to cut open the roof and, and reinforce that to, to support that weight? Mike Dufek on behalf of the, the building owner, and thank you for your time. Um, yeah, so the, there's the original plans that were submitted actually had a tenant in mind, and in that with that tenant package, we had an office on the first floor, then a mezzanine, and offices on the second floor. They don't have a tenant in mind now, so obviously depending on whether they occupy 1,000 square feet or 15,000 square feet, it's going to dictate the size of that rooftop unit. So yeah, we would we would we would probably set curbs now and roof them in. Okay. Uh, and the the owner has agreed to. He understands and knows that their roof screen will be required when we put the rooftop unit in, but. Whether that unit is a six-ton unit or a ten-ton oh, unit, okay. you don't know until we have a tenant. Okay, you pretty much answered my question with curbing. Uh, and then, uh, is this building connected to the existing building? Will, will it be cut in there? And if it is, 
Uh, how are the, obviously this building is going to have to be sprinkled. Will it have its own, uh, you know, pump riser and the whole deal coming off the hydrant system? That's probably a question for fire, but if you want to go with it, let me know. Yeah, so we looked into it. The water pressure in the existing pump room is not adequate to support this new section. So there are there is a new hydrant that was mentioned. Uh, the new hydrant will support a new riser in this addition. Um, for whatever reason, the pressures aren't that high there. I don't know if it's the volumes in the water tower that's across the street or what. Uh, but yeah, it'll be adjacent. It'll be it'll be connected to the existing building. In the front facade, the intent is to bring that front facade from the existing building across the new addition and return back um, because of the the, the limited setback. Uh, if you looked at the north side of the building now, it's it's metal. Uh, we would continue the precast along the north side all the way to the rear of the lot, although it wouldn't be the exposed aggregate that the, the owner actually prefers and is easier to maintain a painted uh, panel. So that would be the intent on that, on that north side. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make clear that that's going to be a completely separate sprinkle system there. Because you probably need calculations and I would doubt the old system would support the new building anyways. Yeah, and we'll work. We'll obviously work with, with staff here on, on the engineering of the utility pipeline, and then also, I mean, all of our mechanicals will have to submit. Okay, Their and engineers. then I, I guess this is a question for our staff. Given the size of the building, uh, is there an adequate amount of parking being added? As of right now, there is no tenant, so they're um, estimating about seven to 10 new employees in the in the new section so there's 18 parking stalls being added okay. uh, and no docks or they'll share existing trash pickups stuff like that for me let me just pull up the elevation for you so there will be new new docks on the back end east elevation okay. and there's adequate room for the trucks to the back and turn and get out okay uh trash bin there is one proposed on the on the on the east elevation yeah. and mechanical screening once they go up there <laughs> sorry about all this but <laughs> that is another um request okay mm -hmm. so and you're working through it with the applicant Correct. okay Anyone else besides me got anything? <laughs> <laughs> Added pole lighting. Do we got any pole lighting going back there? Nothing. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I have nothing else with that. I'm, I'm fine. Clerk <laughs> moves that the plan commission approve the site plan submitted by Mike Dufek, Dufek Construction, for the property at 7340. South Howell Avenue with the following conditions. Number one, that all relevant code requirements remain in effect. Number two, that a landscaping plan be submitted for review and approval by the Department of Community Development prior to the submission of building permit applications. Number three, that the plans are revised to include locations for all new and relocated mechanicals, transformers, and utilities. All mechanical equipment, transformers, and utility boxes ground building and rooftop shall be screened from view. Number four, that all water and sanitary connection requirements are coordinated with the Oak Creek water and sewer utility prior to submission of permit applications. And number five, that all revised plans, site building, landscaping, etc., are submitted in digital format for review and approval by the Department of Community Development prior to the submission of building permit applications. Alderman Lorick, may I interrupt for one second? Uh, the suggested motion should be that the plan commission approves the site and building plans. I apologize for the mistake. Okay. I'll amend my motion as stated. Who's the call scale second? Roll call. Anna, aye. Sullivan, aye. Hello, aye. Lorik, aye. Kavich, aye. Who's the call scale, aye. Hold on, aye. Deeper, aye. Okay. Um, get some, gets us to 5F, and it's a plan review. And it's a review of site, landscape, and related plans submitted by Bill Gust, HB Investments for an indoor sports complex with daycare and commercial tenant spaces on a portion of the property at 7869 South 13. Gary. As stated, Mr. Mayor, this is a proposal for an indoor sports facility with daycare and commercial tenant spaces. It's 101,217 square feet. 
in a two-story building. There we go. Uh, it will have indoor sporting and training facilities catering to soccer, baseball, football, lacrosse, and cheerleading. We'll also have a program called After School Sports. That's before school and after school activities. A fully licensed uh, daycare will be in the southwest portion of the building. This will also be available for various parties, leagues, tournaments, and similar events, and as proposed, can accommodate up to eight commercial tenants on the first floor. Proposed hours of operation are 6 a.m. to meet midnight, and the building, as proposed, meets all the setback requirements of the PUD. Parking and access is shown on the screen right now. Um, there are two parking stalls on the southwest corner uh, that are not meeting the setback quite. However, this is because there is a cross access and shared parking agreement with the lot to the south. That's part of the PUD, so a copy of that executed and shared agreement should be provided to the city prior to submission of building permit applications. There's no change to the proposed common access off of 13th Street for the PUD development. This site will actually be accessed fully by internal roadways. Sorry about that. So we do have some minimum required parking um, that are in the chart in your in your handouts. Rather than going through that, just suffice to say that there are several items uh, that would pertain to this particular site, but there's not one general category that really encompasses everything that could possibly go on here. Um, so that information has been provided and staff is comfortable with the total number of stalls that are shown in the plans. There are also two bark up. Uh, Bicycle parking racks, try saying that 10 times fast, on each corner of the building. So we do have some alternative uh, parking arrangements that are available. And we do also have that cross access um, agreement with the proposed uh, Hub 13 apartment complex development to the north. There will be sidewalks and internal connection points for trails throughout the development. So we do have some extensive um, multimodal options for this and the, the remaining PUD. We do have a landscape plan. Uh, there were some conversations with staff and the applicant and their consultants regarding uh, treatment of the parking lot in particular. So what is on the screen right now is the very latest version of the landscape plan. It is now incorporating some landscape islands in the middle of the parking lot to provide that pedestrian access from the south all the way north to the entry point of the building. Those islands do incorporate a little bit of landscaping as well. So we would like to thank the applicant and their consultants for working through these issues with staff. Right now on the screen is the uh, conceptual internal uh, floor plan for the first floor. You'll notice that there are indoor courts, and then on the southwest west portion of the building, that's where the daycare facility is going to be. There is an outdoor play area for the daycare. It is fully enclosed with a, with a fence. That fence is proposed to be composite or something similar. Uh, six feet tall, completely opaque. It will be accessed, uh, a controlled access from the building. There will be a locked gate on there as well. Uh, the only access to there is from the building and it will only be used by the daycare. Now on the southeast portion of the building, that's where those tenant spaces are. There are no occupants or proposed tenants at this time. Could accommodate up to eight, anywhere between roughly 850 square feet to about 1,100 square feet. Now if we get to the elevations, the proposed building, this doesn't really give you much of a, an idea of what it is, but however, the proposed exterior building materials include stained concrete panels in two shades of gray and one shade of blue. We'll get you a graphic of that in just a second here. There you go. We will have also aluminum storefront assemblies on the southwest and east elevations. Those are essentially the, the doors, the windows, the tenant spaces that will be on the, on the building. There's one decorative metal canopy over the main entrance on the south. Uh, staff made a recommendation that we also incorporate some similar treatments over the daycare areas on the southwest and possibly even the retail spaces on the southeast and east. Providing that cohesiveness also provides a little bit of um, shade for the, the internal um, offices and daycare facility there. 
There are wall-mounted lights on all but the north. The reason that they aren't on the north is because it's respecting the proposed residential development on the north. Mechanical units are not shown. However, they are um, anticipated to be centered in the, in the, on the roof so that they are hidden from the public road and uh, other rights of way. So we are including in the conditions of approval that standard condition that all ground building and rooftop mechanical units be screened. There is one trash enclosure that is proposed on the east side of the building. We do need um, materials or elevations for those, but that can be submitted at a later date. We do have a condition of approval for that. Um, as mentioned previously, we did get updated landscape plans that are now incorporating all of staff's comments. We'll continue to work with the applicant if any further revisions are required. And signs, though they are shown on the building, are currently placeholders. They may need to come back for review by the plan commission in case in the case that variances are required. If the plan commission is satisfied with the plans as proposed, there is a suggested motion that the plan commission approves the site and building plan submitted by Bill Gust, HB investments for a portion of the property at 7869 South 13th Street, which is lot one of CSM approved on February 17th, 2020, and subject to conditions one through seven. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. This is really exciting. Something very unique to southeastern Wisconsin here. So it's really pretty special here going on. So we'll open it up to the commission for questions. A uh, lot to look at. But Greg, you want to start us off? First off, a comment from the applicant. Although not in my district, I probably got a majority of positive comments about this coming to the city. Um, a lot of people are excited about it. Um, one question I do have, though, um, as father to a huge basketball fan, I'm as to why basketball is excluded from all of the sports listed. Oh, sorry, you'll have to approach the uh, well, approach well, Bill, the podium. Well, Bill's uh, on the way up here. I just want to introduce you to Bill and oh. Bill to the Planning Commission. Bill, we've been working with Bill for oh a number of months on uh, his plans to open up uh, a facility in Oak Creek. Uh, it's been a great experience, and just wanted to make the introduction for you. And I'm sure Bill has. Lots to say about his development because it's, uh, you're right, Mayor, it's very, very special, very unique, and it really is a, a very befitting uh, development to kind of kick off the, the Highgate PUD and with, with more exciting news to come certainly in the next few months. Thank you, Doug. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm Bill Gust, as Doug said. So to address your question, on the second floor, which we have up now, there are courts up there. Um, and or, or they could be fields, so I, I could do either. At Naperville Yard, I originally had them as courts, and I ended up doing fields just because what, it's what I know better. Um, and, and at one point, we, I was working with the, the city on it. There was another facility that might come up that had courts, so I, did, I wanted to be respectful of that. It sounds like that may not go, and if it doesn't, then um, I think we would like to do the courts up on, on the second floor. Yep. Uh, as long as we have Bill up, any other questions? Nothing from Christina, Matt, Don, Greg, uh, Donnie. Yeah, keep that floor plan up, the second floor. So just to the, I guess that would be the north. This open area is that just open to deciding what if you're going to have it a football field? Or no, no, that's um, so that's one story. So that's the field. So I need the higher. So half the building is two stories, and half the building oh, is I see. full I see. story for the field. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Chris, anything? Well, I'll just bring up what I did uh, on some with some other things going on. My seniors uh, walking, that's something that, that's walkability. So if they can come in, there was a track, an outside track that they could, you know, walk inside and, and pay a nominal fee. Mm -hmm. That might be something worth uh, considering. Okay. Thank you. Um, Fred? Oh, it looks good to me. Utilize okay. it. Uh, I'll reiterate this. Um, it's called the Milwaukee Yards in Oak Creek, uh -huh. not the Oak Creek Yards. And yeah. that's great because this is actually a regional facility. It wasn't meant just to serve Oak Creek, although primarily a lot of Oak Creek residents are going to take advantage of this. This is a regional opportunity for southeastern Wisconsin, and this is very unique to the area. That you really can't come up with many facilities like this. We have some, some. Uh, but nothing this modern, uh, this technically advanced. And then with the, the spaces there, they can be rented out to various businesses associated with 
with sporting things. This is this is going to be great. I, I'm really thankful that you're here. Oh, thank you, thank uh, you. W- guys. Without a doubt, um, the bicycles. I think it's a great idea um, to have the racks. We do not have in Milwaukee. There's something called bubbler bikes. You know, they use mm-hmm. them cross country where you have a bike rack and you put the ATM in. Uh, this is a, a site that could actually probably kick it off here in Oak Creek oh, to yeah. to different residential areas, whether subdivisions or possibly high density areas, areas such as Drexel Town Square for people to get to and from. Mm-hmm. So it yeah. uh, might be a partnership for you in the future. You see how it yeah, goes. Yeah, that would be but, great. Um, I do not have many questions going forward right now. I think it's really great. Greg? One more question. I just noticed um, in the staff report, the only thing they were able to kind of look at for parking was volleyball courts. Yep. Um, you know, as somebody who goes to many kid sporting events, I know a lot of parents show up. Yes. Um, and you have two other locations like this. Is the parking sufficient? I mean, how many events do you have going at once where spectators are coming to watch? Yeah, I know on one of the pages there, I actually did a parking study with Naperville Yard to show you. So I took our busiest week of the year and, and just did parking by the hour. And the hour is the, the biggest time um, because it's when people are yeah, haven't left yet and the other people are already coming, getting ready for the games. So you, could, you can see that there. Excellent. Um, I can't come up with any other questions at this time. There's no real staff concerns. Um, Actually, I have one more. Christina? Since I'm thinking about events as well, usually the kids between events, they want to go grab a, like a, a drink or a snack or something. Is there going to be something provided on the facility to provide? Yes, we'll have okay. a concession stand. Okay. And then I'm hoping in one of the retails that you know maybe we'll have a you know a bar restaurant. That would be great for I heard that there's seven, right? Six or seven commercial open? Yes, yeah. Okay. And so I think it would be a great you know spot for it there. So we're excited about that. Okay. Right. Uh, excellent, excellent regional addition. Like I said, uh, names appropriate because it is regional to the greater Milwaukee. Yeah, it's all search engines, so that's why I know, you know I get to get it. the I broader get it. area. You know, we'll get. That's, uh, I get it, but yeah. uh, just a little ribbing. But it, no, it, no, it I, really does go to what a regional draw this is going to be yeah. for all the residents of southeastern Wisconsin. So. Thanks for coming. Over. Great, thanks, thanks excellent. for having us. Okay, if nothing else. Uh, can we motion, please, on 5G? Uh, no, not 5G, 5F. Clark moves that the plan commission approve the site and building plans submitted by Bill Gust, HB Investments, for a portion of the property at 7869 South 13th Street. Lot 1 of CSM approved 21720 with the following conditions. Number 1, that all relevant code requirements remain in effect. Number two, that the certified survey map approved by the Common Council on February 17th, 2020 shall be submitted for recording prior to the submission of building permit applications. Number three, that a copy of the executed cross access and shared parking agreement with the parcel to the south shall be provided to the city prior to the submission of building permit applications. Number four, that the plans are revised to include locations and screening for all mechanical equipment, transformers, and utilities. Number five, that the plans are revised to include details for the proposed trash enclosure. Number six, that the landscape plan is revised as necessary for compliance with code requirements. And number seven, that all revised plans, site building, landscaping, etc. are submitted in digital format for review by the Department of Community Development prior to the submission of building permit applications. Who's the Ghost Girl second? Roll call. Anna, aye. Sullivan, aye. Brother, aye. Laura, aye. David Chai. Kuzikowski I. Aldani I. Seaford I. All right. Thank you, Bill. Um, item 5G, um, Master Sign Plan Review. Uh, master Sign Plan Review f- um, for a multi tenant commercial building at 2603 West Rawson Avenue. Gary. I think commissioners may recall that there was an approval for exterior building modifications at the site in January of 2019, and as part of those conditions of approval, a revised master landscape or a master sign plan was required. And the reason for that is because the exterior building modifications would uh, 
slightly alter the tenant spaces, and therefore we needed to have a master sign plan on, on record that would provide for those modifications. So what we have on the screen right now is the elevation for the, um, the Rawson Avenue uh, elevation. And what I would like to draw the Plan Commission's attention to attention to are the um, the proposal for tenant signs to be on both the north and south elevations, but they will have a provided backer plate, an aluminum backer plate, on which to put non-illuminated signs. That backer plate will be provided by uh, the landowner or the management company, and that is the only location where the tenant signage will be. Each of the entrances will have their own individual uh, signs indicating the entrance um, by uh, by identification, so A or B, as well as the address, and the address is kind of the name of the of the building. It's twenty six zero three West Rawson Center. There is a section of code that says that only individual tenants with their own exterior entrance shall be permitted one wall sign, and individual tenants in buildings and developments with internal entrances only shall not be permitted a wall sign. There are entrances for the building that are centralized right now. However, based on tenant needs and build out, individual tenant spaces will be incorporated with their own entrances at the time that they are uh, applied for. So what this is considering is kind of a maximum build out, if you will, for the building. It's showing the maximum number of signs that would be allowed for tenants. And individual tenants, as provided in the master sign plan, it's, it's stated on here, on every page, that uh, they will have their own individual entrances before they're allowed to sign. Uh, we would like to thank the applicant for working with us on, to get that language on here. It satisfies the requirement of the code and allows some flexibility for them to market the building and get the tenants in there that they need. There is a monument sign that is provided in the plans. We did get a revision that's on your, your, your seats right now showing a monument sign that is in compliance with all of the requirements of code. So staff has uh, recognized that. Thank you again for uh, working with us on that to meet the code requirements. Therefore, there is uh, one change to the suggested motion and that is to strike condition number three. The suggested motion is therefore that the plan commission approves the master sign plan submitted by Aaron Stanton and Steve Mills, CMA, for the multi-tenant commercial building on the property at 2603 West Rawson Avenue, subject to conditions now one through three. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Gary. Um, questions, comments from the commission? Fred? Oh, looks good. Okay. Don? Nope, no questions. Chris? Uh, what are, Gary, do you know how many, what are the maximum tenants they can have in what they're showing on the north elevation is, I think, 17 and possibly 16 or 15. Somewhere in that range is probably the maximum. Okay. Well, I would like to say, though, that that aside, um, the improvements that they've been doing there and then the sign, sign plan I have no problem with, but all of the additions and fixing up, it just looks so nice. So thank you for everything you've been working on. Uh, Christina? Uh, just one question. What type of tenant are we looking at? Just commercial, industrial? I think there might be a couple of medical offices that are in there and medical type offices that are located in there right now, but it, there are quite a few vacant tenant spaces. It's a commercial space. They can put anything that's allowed in the district. So there are enough parking stalls for those type of... Y yes, this is an existing building. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Matt? Don? Quick question. Um, you oh, they I could, think you're getting picked up on mic. You mentioned that they can get a door to the outside. Will they need signage above that door? The signage that's shown in the master sign plan would be the only approved locations. So wherever the door is placed would have to be respectful of where the signage would go. Um, that would probably alter just uh, how many would be on the north elevation or the south elevation. They would move as necessary. but in the banding where they are placed, that's the only places that they'll be allowed. There are awnings above each of the windows that kind of prevent them from moving higher, so it's just kind of, they're all in this 
space that's about three and a half feet off the ground. Okay, thank you. Greg? Um, I would just second the comment that the building looks much nicer, very updated. Um, my kid's dentist is actually in that building right now. Um, and I know from the older building, it was very difficult to know who was in that building. So seeing this sign up is a relief to be able to see some of the names. Anyone else? Nothing? Um, I, I just got a comment too. Uh, the building's really been, went from a dated building to a, a more contemporary looking building. Uh, signage is much, much appreciated. Again, I visited the dental when they opened and a couple of the medical facilities that are in there and we hope this really increases traffic at, at this building and helps make it successful for the investment put in. So um, I'm fully with, with the signage going on. So, um, Again, motion and three would be stricken, correct, Kerry? So, motion, please. Donnie moves that the plan commission approves the master sign plan submitted by Aaron Stanton, Steve Mills, CMA, for the multi-tenant commercial building on the property of 2603 West Rawson Avenue with the following conditions. One, that all relevant code requirements remain in effect. Two, that the individual tenant sign shall be permitted only when an exterior individual tenant Entrance is provided. One sign per entrance. Three stricken. Four, that all revised plans are submitted in digital format for the review and approval by the Department of Community Development prior to the submission of permit applications. Bert seconds. Roll call. Anna I. Sullivan I. Rillo I. Lorik I. Uh, Bukavich I. Zukowski I. Boldani I. Seifert I. And before we adjourn, I just want to thank the commission. Um, you've accomplished a lot tonight. This was a very heavy agenda, uh, and there was no such thing as a light item on this agenda. So congratulations uh, on handling this. Uh, but it, it's just not all us. Um, I want to thank the staff because this was a lot to prepare for in one night. Uh, you don't see this very often, the professionalism that was put forward on these very difficult projects. So congratulations to all the staff, engineering, and everybody that worked on it. Uh, and as always, thank you to our IT guy for uh, giving us good visuals with that. So Andrew, nice job. Uh, Andrew was responsible for a lot of things that happened tonight. So thank you very much. Uh, with that, adjournment, please. Rillo adjourned, uh, moves to adjourn at 7.17. Seifert seconds. Roll call. Anna I. Sullivan I. Perillo I. Lorik I. Kavich I. Zikowski I. Lani I. Seifert I. Good. All right. Good night, everybody, and congratulations, Oak Creek. A lot going on. Yeah. Oh, me.